Hello, hope you're doing well. Before we dive into today's video, I want to take a really quick second to thank today's sponsor, Tears of Themis. Now, if you've clicked onto this video because you're a fan of the good-looking men that feature in Genshin Impact, which is understandable, I get you, um, <laughs> then you may also want to check out this game, because not only is it made by the very same company, but it also revolves around solving crimes alongside another collection of very good-looking men. Tears of Themis is Hoyoverse's first foray into the romance genre, and they've made sure to spice it up with a decent helping of detective work too, as you take part in the X-Note program, a project which aims to clean up the streets of Stellis City, a futuristic location where people have started to fall victim to mysterious violent outbreaks. Between collecting evidence, cross-examining witnesses, and playing parlor games to level up and increase your compatibility with your favorite fellas, I think it's safe to say that this game covers a lot of bases. The special winter event, Snowfall and Secrets, will be running from December 12th to the 18th. If you'd like to check it out and have a shot at scoring some of the shiny new seasonal character cards, as well as a bunch of bonus rewards, then you can use the link in the description to download Tears of Themis today and start your own romantic adventure. Anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and jump right from one Hoyoverse game into another now, because I think it's about time to get this speed paint started. Alrighty, so for this one, um, not least of all because I have been really enjoying the Sumeru updates that have been rolling out in Genshin recently, I really wanted to have a go at drawing a bunch of the lads that hail from that new continent. Although this first one might be landing a spot on this list by way of a technicality, but my list, my rules, and I really like this character, so he very much gets to be here. Um, <laughs> in any case, yeah, first up we have the Animo user formerly known as Scaramouche. I think technically his legal name is Wanderer now, but although I haven't had a chance to play the latest chapter of the main story quite yet, I do also realise that if the lightly spoilery meme content that I've seen around so far is anything to go by, the name Wanderer may also be subject to change. In any case, if you are a Genshin fan, you'll probably already know this, but he has been such an anticipated character that it kind of almost feels surreal that he's finally playable in the game. Uh, one of my friends especially is a massive Scaramouche fan, and uh, we all ended up doing pulls together as soon as his banner dropped, and really the only feasible explanation for what occurred that I can think of is that Scarra himself heard the siren call of a gathered fan club and descended from the heavens at Mark V speed because all four of us, like all at once, ended up getting him within like two ten pulls each maximum, which uh, collectively it felt like a very, um, a very pog moment, as I believe the gamers say. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely not trying to jinx anything by saying that making art of my favourite upcoming Genshin characters has brought me good luck when pulling for their banners, but it did work back when I drew Ayato, and it worked this time around when I drew Scaramouche here, and not for nothing, but I am very much hoping that it will work for Al Haytham when his banner comes up too, but We'll get to him in a second. Um, <laughs> in any case, as happy as I was to be able to actually pull Scaramouche in the game, it was a bit of a, like, ah, beans kind of moment, because his banner was only released a few days after I'd already finished drawing this picture, which meant that when I got to take a proper look at his in-game model while playing him, I ended up noticing a couple of differences between his actual design and the way I'd drawn him here. Namely, a couple of differences that my precision-craving brain just could not let slide, so I did end up having to go back in and make some corrections after I was done recording this one. For the most part, it wasn't anything major, but because I couldn't find any good reference pictures for the underside of his hat back when I was compiling my reference images, I did end up kind of just fully making up what it looked like here in the hopes that it would end up at least vaguely hat-shaped. Um, I am happy with the way that the hat did turn out after going back and correcting it, which is something you'll have to wait and see at the end of this video, but now that I have actually been able to play him in the game, I do kind of wish that I'd kept his hat on, like, a separate layer than the rest of his line work and colouring, because it might have been cool to have the option to maybe render his hat in the style of that, like, um, man, I have no idea what it's called, but, like, the magical particle effect-y kind of halo slash jet engine that it morphs into when you use one of his powers. That's such a weird description to anyone who has not played this game. Um, <laughs> speaking of his abilities though, um, for the what I now realise is a very flexible pose that I have him in here, I took inspiration from his ultimate move where he kicks like the... Basically, he kicks a Rasengan down onto his enemies and gives them a little hurricane stomp, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's fun, it's festive, it drove a lot of Scaramouche fans absolutely feral when the promotional video for his moveset was first released, so I knew that that was definitely, like, THE pose to try and draw my main inspiration from for this one. The extra personal spin that I put on it here, though, also very much took inspiration from a lifetime of reading One Piece, and specifically being a Sanji fan, because when I was drawing up potential poses and compositions in my sketchbook, I kept coming back to this variety of really exaggerated axe kicks. 
I know that in Scaramouche's actual ultimate, it is much more of a bent knee stomping kind of situation, like I say, but there really is just something so cool looking about these proper, like, bringing the hammer down kind of moves when it comes to kick-centric fighting styles. At least I think so. Um, <laughs> Putting him in this pose with his leg aligned really vertically like this also gave me the chance to not only play around with the rest of the more flowy elements of his outfit and try to have them like swirling down and around the whole picture while following the arc of motion from the kick, but also gave me a chance to show off another little personal spin on the way he looks, which is mostly just a design preference that I've picked up from seeing a fair bit of Genshin fan art that does the same thing, and I always find really fun. Basically, I ended up giving him a little ball joint detail that's visible on the back of his knee. I did also do some line work on his hand that's meant to imply that his fingers are segmented in the same way, but it's a bit harder to see. And really the only reason that I implemented those is that when a human looking character is in fact non-human, I do really like being able to show off those kinds of little traits that you wouldn't normally be able to implement on a fully human character design. It's just something that always really scratches my brain the right way. Anyway, this was obviously the very first picture that I worked on out of today's batch of character art, and I don't know if it was because I was just getting into the swing of things, or because of the difficult pose, or maybe because I'd forgotten just how complex Genshin character designs can be, because like seriously, I had to add extra layers to this one so many times in the middle of working on it because I kept noticing entire chunks of his outfit that I'd somehow missed. But yeah, this one took me over a full hour longer to get done than any of the other ones that I worked on for today, and I'm not entirely surprised because Scaramouche is extra as hell, so it only stands to reason that he would take a little extra time to finish illustrating too. Anyway, moving from one drama queen right along to another, the next character that I'm drawing here is none other than the feeble scholar himself, Alhatham. I was gonna say I can't remember when he first got introduced, but I think what I mean is like, I can't remember when exactly it was that I first encountered him, as in like whether it was actually in the game itself, or if it was in some of the promotional videos and like Twitter fan cams of him that came out before the questline that he actually features in. Either way though, as soon as this guy appeared on the screen in whatever form it may have been, he was an instant favourite for me. Which will probably come as no surprise if you've seen the last Genshin speed paint I did, or indeed any other content of mine in which I talk about my favourite types of characters from anything. Anything at all. Um, <laughs> I mean really, who am I to deny the appeal of a sarcastic smartass with spectacular pecs who is both a tactical genius and a social dumbass all at the same time? I certainly can't deny that. I think a lot of the fandom also can't if, again, Twitter is anything to go by. Um, <laughs> much like with Scaramouche anyway, and somewhat frustratingly, I'm not gonna lie, um, I finished this artwork the day before Al Haytham's official drip marketing got released at the Game Awards, so at the time of drawing this one, I had no way of knowing what his fighting style or weapon or basically any of his actual playable in-game visuals might look like. I did end up sketching a couple more action-focused poses... poses? Poses poses is the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I ended up sketching a couple kind of fighty stances um, <laughs> for him when I was initially trying to figure out a composition, one of which actually ended up being quite close to one of the poses that he does strike when using his normal attacks, with his sword like tucked behind him in a cool guys don't look at explosions kind of way. But yeah, as much as I really did want to draw him with at least some kind of dynamic fighting pose like the rest of the guys in today's lineup, I also didn't want to just make up a visual for his powers, only for it to end up being completely wrong once he does get added to the game fully. So what I ended up doing instead was to draw him in a standing pose, reaching out towards the camera, while holding some of his more story quest related items, instead of anything weapons or elemental ability related. Namely, the book that he's always reading during the Archon quest, when he should be, you know, planning, or anything else, um, <laughs> and a knowledge capsule. I do quite like how this pose turned out, it feels very unbothered and it's got like a certain smug energy to it under the surface which feels very in character for this guy, let's put it that way. But if my drawing brain cells do happen to align whenever I next have some free time, I would quite like to try sketching him in some actual fighting poses as well, now that I have seen what his fighting style actually looks like. Not least of all because between Al Haytham and my regrettable longtime favourite Tartaglia, I am evidently very much not immune to the inherent appeal of sword fighters who use multiple weapons at once. 
I'm really interested to see what the deal is as well with his actual elemental skills, because by the looks of things, he has like a little teleport move that he can do, and his elemental powers and ultimate seem to have like a cool geometric leaves sort of style to them, and um, actually, you know what, I just realized that between him and Kazuha, who is another one of my faves that I really do need to draw at some point, how have I not drawn him yet? Um, <laughs> but between those two, um, if you put them together, maybe, maybe with Sayu as well, you'd be halfway towards making an entire team of characters with some kind of leaf aesthetic. And now I cannot stop thinking of the possibilities there because I love that idea. Um, <laughs> Also, a complete topic jump here, but while my mind is wandering to other things anyway, I forgot to mention during the last picture that I actually had some technical issues while I was recording these. Um, specifically, and heads up because this is a bit of a horror story, when I was two full hours into recording the coloring for Scaramouche, my computer crashed, and I had a moment of absolute fear because I could not remember when I'd last saved. Thankfully, the footage I was getting managed to autosave, and so did my canvas, so I only ended up losing about five minutes of work towards the very end of the process, which meant that I was able to just dive right back in and finish it up in another, like, mini batch of recording. But, uh, yeah, no less scary in the moment, and, uh, my working theory is that there was some kind of update to my recording software that made my screen just throw a complete wobbly and freeze up, because I changed some settings after that happened, and it's, you know, knock on wood anyway, it was completely fine after that, and it has continued to be completely fine, but uh, yeah, the point of this side story anyway is that I was proceeding with the rest of these pieces with so much caution after that, because I was just so anxious that my screen might freeze up and I might end up losing a ton of progress. There's not much of a punchline to this little anecdote either, I just wanted to use my moment of horror as an example and uh, kind of remind any of you guys who also screen record or just do digital art or digital work in general to save your work regularly and also save yourself from any potential inescapable nightmares by setting up autosaves as well. This has been a PSA. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that's my customary piece of legitimate creative advice for this video, so um, yeah, back to the hot nerd, I think. Uh, <laughs> I know I already said as much, but Alhatham really has become quite a favourite for me by now as far as the Genshin character roster goes. Partially, yes, because of how cool he looked at first sight, but also because of how much of a thespian he ended up being in the story quest, which was really quite unexpected. I'm trying my best not to spoiler anything, but dang, you would think the man was a part of the theatre troupe by the way he committed to the bit during certain scenes. If you have played the Archon quest, you'll probably know exactly which scene I'm thinking of in particular, but to make a long story short, it was hot and I will not be taking any further questions at this time. So, moving swiftly on, the, uh, <laughs> the next character in today's lineup is the electro-wielding general Mahamatra and Sumeru's most infamous maker of terrible jokes, Sino. Sino, almost in a similar way to Alhatham, actually. Um, with Sino, I remember being like, whoa, look at this guy, he's so cool, when I first saw his promotional videos and stuff like that. Like, between the spectral Anubis-themed cowl and the badass dialogue lines that he was laying down, and just his general, um, no pun intended there, but his general vibe, um, <laughs> he just immediately had a lot of very cool energy. And then, you know, in the game, he definitely does maintain that same energy, he still remains very cool, very strong, and very smart. He is an infamously feared arbiter of justice, after all. But, such is the duality of man, I guess, he is also canonically a lame, very uncool individual who enjoys bad puns and children's card games, and I love that so much for him. Like, for instance, the fact that the internationally respected and renowned academic institution of Sumeru has found it necessary to put a written policy in place solely to warn its students not to let this man start making jokes, because they will not be funny, and he will not stop making them. Um, <laughs> as well as the fact that this man is a straight up Yu-Gi-Oh Kinney, who has an ongoing dislike of Alhatham, who is the man who has the most Seto Kaiba energy since Seto Kaiba. Uh, <laughs> it's just iconic, really. Like, 10 out of 10. We stan. Um, <laughs> And not only that as well, because besides all of those factors that ended up making him so much more endearing just as a character in general, he's also just an absolute tank to play as. Honestly, I don't tend to really go for polearm characters, but I haven't taken him off of my main adventuring lineup in Genshin ever since I got him. Even before I finish leveling him up properly, all I would need to do in basically any boss fight is just whip out his elemental ultimate, and he would just hack and slash his way through half of any enemy's HP completely on his own, which I was very appreciative of, it made things a whole lot faster. Um, <laughs> 
Anyway, I mentioned before that this guy is a Yu-Gi-Oh Kinney, and uh, <laughs> again, that is basically completely canon, I'm not really exaggerating there. Um, like, the amount of blatant Yu-Gi-Oh parodying and, like, intentional nudge-nudge-wink-wink wink kind of jokes that are written into the game uh, whenever it comes to anything card game related is genuinely really funny. Um, but that does remind me, actually, I've been playing a teeny bit of the new, like, trading card game, kind of mini-game mode that's been added to Genshin in the latest update, and I've been having a lot more fun with it than I expected. I can definitely understand why Sino enjoys it so much. I think the most surprising thing about it so far though, besides just how large scale they've made it in terms of the whole like adventuring around and finding some more NPCs to duel with kind of aspect, is that Timmy, the pigeon boy, is apparently a level 10 opponent, which is horrifying. Like, I don't know why that kid is seemingly so strong, but I suppose I will just have to cross that literal bridge when I come to it, because I'm only level 2 at the moment, and I know not what kind of feathered doom awaits me there. So, um, <laughs> maybe wish me luck with that, uh, if you want, or wish me suffering, because I feel like either way, I'm still gonna end up getting trounced by this strange child outside of Mondstadt, so, um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I feel like the pose that I ended up drawing Sino in here anyway, uh, to jump back to the art side of things real quick, is a fair bit similar to the pose that I drew Zhongli in in my last Genshin video. There are only so many ways that you can fit a pole arm onto a vertical canvas like this, I suppose. Although I will say, if I had to compare the two, I do think I quite prefer how this one turned out over the one of Zhongli from last time. Partially because I feel like my grasp on anatomy has gotten at least a little bit better since last time around, but also because I'm really, really happy with how the colouring on Sino ended up looking. Especially the effects, like the big purple claw in particular, is something that I'll have to try and remember what layer blending modes I used for, because the amount of saturation and transparency that I managed to get with it was exactly what I was aiming for, so I'm definitely really happy about that. It's always quite interesting doing part twos to an art series like this, because while I do always try to at least keep the layouts uniform to some degree, uh, kind of like with these sort of vertical rectangles in the background of all of these illustrations for instance, it's still unavoidable when doing like a second part to something like this, that there will be noticeable changes in style between one installment and the next, even if only slightly. And, I don't know, it ends up being a surprisingly good way to make, like, direct comparisons between where you were creatively however many months ago, and where you are now, which is something that I always really appreciate being able to see. Anyway, putting all of that uh, creative introspection to one side for the moment, for our last but not least character of the day, we have the current record holder for the title of both sassiest and fluffiest Rainforest Watcher, Tainari. Now, it's at this point that I do want to mention that for all of the fellas that I drew today, um, most of which being characters who actually hail from Sumeru, the deserty, rainforesty region, I did end up trying to be as accurate as I could to their actual in-game designs. Uh, elements that I had to guess, like Scaramouche's hat, obviously notwithstanding. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the reason that I mention this anyway is because although I have seen a ton of really good redesigns for a bunch of the Sumeru characters knocking around online, which do tend to take a bit more inspiration from the actual real-life places and people who inspired the region in the game, um, I figured that if I were to try my hand at fully reworking any of these designs myself, that that would be something I would want to really be able to take a decent amount of time to do properly by, like, looking into various clothing designs and mythologies and just any stuff like that which might help to inform those kinds of redesigns. But honestly, full disclosure, I was working on this video alongside about four other projects all at once, so I just did not have enough time to do any of those kinds of really involved reimaginings to the degree that I would want to do them if I did have the time to do so. Um, hopefully that phrasing makes sense, but the short version of all of that is that you guys already know I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and especially so when it comes to trying to involve elements from cultures that I'm not quite as educated on. I, f I feel like that's an important thing to try and be wary of when you're, when you're designing anything. But having said that, I did, if nothing else, um, still end up making the call with this one to change Tainari's color palette slightly, specifically in the skin tone department, which is something that you'll see when we get onto the coloring here. And actually, that's an adjustment that I also ended up doing for Sino after I finished recording his one as well, because as much as I do love these guys as characters, and as much as I do genuinely enjoy both of their canon appearances, they are also both outdoorsy boys from a Middle Eastern and African and South Asian inspired nation, and I don't know, I tend to agree with the general consensus that they really deserve to have some melanin about it. Um, <laughs> 
That said, that kind of minor adjustment is very easy to make on my part, it's just a slight alteration to the colouring, so if you are interested in seeing what more of a full-on in-depth redesign for any of today's lineup might look like in that department, I would very much recommend that you guys do go and seek out some of the amazing work that countless other artists have been doing pretty much since the moment these guys were introduced to the game, because again, as much as I do love these characters and their designs, it is always really cool to see interpretations that feel a bit more faithful to the cultures that actually inspired them. On the subject of loving their actual in-game designs though, I should probably admit that in Tainari's case, I honestly didn't like the look of him at all when his design was first revealed prior to him actually appearing in the game, and that doesn't really feel nice to say because like, I like him now and it is wrong to judge a book by their cover, but initially his design struck me as being way too busy and that it had like too many colours that all seemed to jar with each other somehow, and overall I don't even fully understand what it was about it that kind of struck such an off chord with me in the first place, because normally I'm a really big fan of the way that Genshin does do their character designs, but for whatever reason, this one just took a really long time for me to click with and actually find appealing. But beyond his visual design in any case, the absolute sass that comes about in some of his dialogue and character notes made him grow on me really really quickly, which now that I think about it, actually maybe did help me get more used to his costume too, because much like Sino, Tainari is another character who took up a semi-permanent place on my team as soon as I got him, so you know, I was definitely seeing enough of him and his outfit to get used to it. To be fair though, it wasn't solely his personality that ended up landing him a space on my adventuring lineup. Like, at first I wasn't even going to pull for him, but after trying him out in the demo mode and seeing how much of an absolute menace I could be with the funky little confuse the hell out of your enemies pollen grenades that he has, and the double strength arrow and rapid fire special move on top of that, I don't really know how to explain the kind of delight that all of that sparked for me other than by saying that Tainari's playstyle resonates so much with the gremlin part of my brain that makes me main Junkrat in Overwatch, and uh, <laughs> until Klee gets a rerun, this sassy little Finnick Foxman is going to be the reigning champion in that department for me as far as my team makeup goes. Anyway, good golly, I have been chatting away here for a while. Um, <laughs> it looks like we're just about coming up to the end of this illustration, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here, so that we can take a closer look at all of today's finished artworks. And that is it for today. As always, thank you guys ever so much for tuning into this one, and big thanks to all of you as well for all of the support that you've been showing to my new merch store so far. I know I only announced it in my previous video, but the amount of excitement that you all have already been showing for the store and for Leaf, and even for the stuff that I haven't actually been able to fully talk about yet, has been really motivating, because it's something that I've worked really hard on, and as far as the unannounced stuff goes, something that I will still be working really hard on for a little while, so thank you again, it really does mean a lot. I do still want to do something for the 400k milestone as well, but it's probably going to have to be in the new year because I am mad busy for the rest of this month, but I should have plenty of other cool stuff on the way for you in the new year as well, so I do very much hope that you can look forward to all of that. Until then, I hope you have a good one, and that you'll all keep on staying as safe, happy, and healthy as you possibly can.